I guess we're coming to the tail end of the presentation, so hopefully I won't bore you to death here. Um, I wear two hats. Uh, one is I am the CTO for Dorado, another orchestration platform, uh, management and orchestration platform. It's a 20-year-old it's a company which started out orchestrating and uh, managing networks for, I, I believe they started with Juniper, then Cisco, Dell, et cetera, et cetera, and then came to Sonic. Um, in my past life, I was actually running the networking division, the software for Dell Networking, and some of my old colleagues are over here. And as part of that endeavor, I was actually in the room where Sonic was born. So Sonic, in a sense, is my stepchild. So my name is nowhere, but I was in the room. I had to go with Leewa and go on, on the board and actually sign my name that I will support Sonic. There is a picture of that somewhere. So, um, so in that capacity, I have a unique view of, of the progress of, of course, Sonic has grown so much. And also, we worked, uh, as part of my old team, we worked with uh, Broadcom in, in order to introduce or accelerate the, um, accelerate the feature functionality of Sonic. Uh, let me see if, OK, I got it. So what, I want, what I'm going to cover today is from my perspective, both from an orchestrator, and I think Amir had actually some, some words which will be very similar to what I'm going to actually talk about, and also with uh, looking at maybe a little bit of a different view on where Sonic is and where we believe Sonic should go and should be with certain call to action. Uh, I also do want to express my gratitude to Stortis for the invitation. This is a, we're really grateful for being here. Um, I did talk about the, the origin of Sonic. The only reason I put this up here is really the last bullet. Um, Sonic is kind of known as, in some places, they say, well, this is the Linux of, of networking. Um, so is it? Is it there yet? Well, we know Microsoft actually is deploying Sonic on, on Azure and Alibaba, very, very involved. But if you start taking those out of the equation of the deployments of Sonic, how much has Sonic grabbed roots? And what is it required for Sonic to actually become truly the Linux of, uh, of networking? And this is a question that Gartner asks us I know we speak with Del Oro. They have their, their own points of views. We have our own point of view. Uh, but we believe that certainly Sonic is the way to go. So, so it is the way to go. But there are uh, challenges. I think a lot of the, um, the presenters have been talking about those. And hopefully, I can actually put them into a pretty concise way for you to consume. Um, this is a simple slide, but it is something that people forget. When you, when you look at, ultimately, what do customers want? And customers are broad, right? So, and I, I, I'm going to break down those customers into your data center, your campus that Matt just talked about. We talk a little bit about telco. I think, actually, I'm going to focus on the telcos a little bit more. And then, ultimately, I'll bring AI into it because, you know, that's a shiny new object. I have to say something about AI. Well, what do they want? It's cost. You know, at the highest level is cost. Um, and the cost is the TCO, it's total cost of ownership. It's not just what it takes for me to acquire, but what it takes for me to run it, what it takes for me to in, expand it. So all of those translate into cost. Quality, quality stands out a little bit more because quality, depending on whom you're talking to from a from a company position, quality will, will surpass cost. Because if quality is poor, I may lose my job. OK? So you know, one of the things that you know, the old timers over here, we kind of know, is that somebody would tell us, says, hey, I will not lose my job if I deploy Cisco. Very straightforward. Well, would I lose my job if I deploy Sonic managed by something else? So quality in that scenario will surpass the cost. Okay, so you have to keep that kind of kind of that in mind, uh, and and so sometimes we kind of forget the TCO aspect of 
of challenges to, to deploying Sonic. So uh, this has been talked about quite a bit. I didn't put up this, this, uh, this slide here for, uh, for you to really understand Redis and, and switch state services and, and Psy, et cetera. But what I put in here is that there is a broad gamut. Matt just talked about uh, potentially looking at well, Sonic for campus. Uh, Larry talked about the Edge Core Sonic. Uh, Broadcom Sonic, we're all uh, quite aware of with Dell, Dell Enterprise Sonic and, and Broadcom Sonic, pretty much one and the same. Um, and then there are niche purpose Sonic builds that are coming from different corners. Um, so all of these, when you, when, when you look at it, it, it it's not a, it's not a homogeneous Sonic. Uh, Amir mentioned that, hey, I look at Sonic as four separate distributions exactly the way we look at it from Dorado. It's four separate distribution. The beauty of it, is it still is Sonic. And from a quality standpoint, when you take a look at it, you know, the hardened, the most hardened one, I can tell you, it is the Enterprise Sonic, you know. To, to it's, 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 to, there's hundreds of millions of dollars investment into hardening that, that Sonic. So it is, again, it costs. Is, is it free? No, it's not free. Should it be free? Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, it's, it's, it's um, and, and from my perspective, the, that innovation, I think that innovation pushing, pushing Sonic forward is actually good for the community. Now, community has to absorb feature and functionalities that are coming at it a little bit faster, so all of us have to kind of step up a little bit, a little bit more in order to just making sure that we can actually uh, deliver new features at a little bit of a faster pace. Um, Telco Edge, uh, I'll, I'll talk to about Telco in a bit, but I think that becomes an absolute key when we look at the flavors, and, and by the way, um, the architecture of Sonic and the availability of Sonic actually allowed Celestica, uh, Edge Core, other white box vendors to really move up the food chain. And this was really, really good for the community from, from our, the, without, without um, you know, I, didn't, I don't mean disrespect to my, my old colleague over here who's gonna ask me a question, but it, it was actually really good for the community. <laughs> Um, so, okay, so let's look at the four segments. This is, this is Stefan's four segments. So obviously, you know, you can segment it any which way that you want to segment it. Um, data center. Well, we know that's where Sonic was born. Uh, if you really take a look at deployment of Sonic in the data centers, um, when we talk to Gardner, as of last year, you take, again, take Microsoft and take Alibaba out out of the equation, that's gonna just lopsite the whole thing. There's five, uh, there was 200, as of the end of last year, it was 200 data centers that deployed Sonic. Um, they estimate at the highest level it would be 500 out of 100,000 data centers, 500 will deploy Sonic. So, so it's, it's really important to take a look and say, well, why, what's inhibiting that deployment? You know, and from our point of view, that now are in this case, I'm looking at at Dorado. You know, you really have to have a complete solution. You know, it, it, it's not. And I think one of the other uh, gentlemen who who was presenting mentioned it. You really do have to look at the entire top to bottom solution. I believe Stordis is pushing pushing the needle in that in that or moving the needle in that direction. So you really got to look at the orchestration. You really got to look at the support aspect of it, and uh, you really look at have to look at and see well is the commoditization of the hardware uh, uh, something that can be taken advantage of, or are you getting locked down again with a vertically integrated hardware and NOS? So that's that's something that you have to take a look at. So. We're not there yet with data center, even though the data center is where Sonic was born. And when you look at campus, and Matt actually talked about campus, um, I, I, I think I have enough time to actually tell you a joke over here or something that I thought about. 
Uh, I talk to a lot of campus customers as, as part of Dorado, and um, I've seen white papers that talk about how you deploy Sonic in a campus, and the white papers, you know, it's okay. Well, you deploy, you know, your overlay over here, your underlay, you do the VXLAN over here, and you create your fabric this way, you do an MC lag, or you do a multi-home uh, EVPN on, on, on your campus network. And, and you're talking to the guy who's operating it, and the guy says, you know, I got a closet. All I know is where's my L2 and where's my L3 boundary, right? I have a distribution frame. I have either a main distribution frame or I have an intermediate distribution frame, which basically has my access, access uh, devices attached there. And I, you know, I, I need to understand where my, my, my VLANs are coming in and going out. So it's essentially, you know, um, it's, it's as if though you're teaching an offside, you know, offside trap for, your, for, for those of you who actually play football and for your American folks over here, I mean soccer. Uh, you play football and you're trying to teach an offside trap to somebody who plays American football. And, and you're telling him that go ahead and play football and make sure that you don't get uh, caught in an offside trap. Um, you know, it's, they don't understand you. You, you, you. you tell fabric, they kind of look in your eyes and say, what's a fabric? I, I, I kid you not, I mean, five, six customers, I, I went there, it's a fabric, you know, what is a fabric? So from an orchestration platform, we actually partnered, we partnered with Dell and we went ahead and created a release or a, a product that says, hey, here's, here's a IDF, here's an MDF, and this is, you know, we, we will manage and orchestrate your closet that looks like a closet. Um, so a, a campus type of an environment, it's all about management and it's all about uh, the day two management. And migrating to Sonic is not a forklift upgrade. So you have to kind of consider, well, how do you go, would you go from one closet at a time? Do you start with the data center with the, or the core piece of it? How do you go? So from an, orchestra, from an orchestration standpoint, we had to always look and say, well, how do we enable these migrations into, into Sonic? Um, from a feature functionality, I think Matt covered it, and I think that though that's good to hear that we are seeing movement in the Sonic environment to actually come up with a lighter weight version of Sonic, and additionally with the new um, feature functionalities or the feature functionalities that are required for a campus environment. Now, when you go to the telco side, it's a bit of a different story. So on a telco front, um, I don't know if we have anyone from a major telcos over here, but we do work with, um, we work with Vodafone, Orange, you know, all the big, big, big guys. Uh, with our partners, we go there. And I can guarantee you, and Stordis knows this probably better than anybody else, that every one of them actually is looking at monetizing the edge very differently than the next one, okay? There is no standard way that any of the telcos are looking at how do you monetize the 5G deployment. Now, one thing that's happening with the telcos is that you are seeing a disaggregation. It is, a, it is the disaggregation that happened with the, with the data center, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, with the hyperscalers, with the data centers that introduced open networking and introduced the commoditization of the hardware, uh, is now that the telcos are looking and saying that, okay, we are seeing the disaggregation and we want to take advantage of the disaggregation. And Sonic now starting to look good because it's also born out of that kind of a disaggregated world, the open networking. Orchestration and management is a key in the telco side, but on the telco side, there is no one size fit all. 
So what we experience is that you have to be able on the management and orchestration work nicely horizontally. You have to work nicely because um, you know there are in there are either tools, you know, scripts, Ansible scripts. You know, when you go to a campus environment, Ansible scripts and so forth is a headache. When you come to the telcos, those operators, the, the guys who are doing the operation, they already have certain libraries that even if you come up and you're starting to set up the, uh, the plumbing, essentially, the, the, the fabric, you still have to play very nice. So we've been very cognizant of this at Dorado, really expanding our automation center that says that, hey, we can actually play nice within these environments. We're cognizant of it. Uh, clearly, clearly slicing of the network is, is very important. So it was interesting to hear Cameron talking about introducing VXLAN support on the Tomahawk 5 platform because that's something that when you look at the, um, you know, um, well, when you look at the edge, and actually if I, if I go there, it's just going to be going down a rabbit hole. But you really have to look at a slicing, uh, the network slicing, and ability to orchestrate those slices um, very successfully is, is, is extremely important for, for the telcos. Now, also, how do you then take that slice from the edge to the mid hall to the back hall? Well, MPLS is not supported from an open source standpoint. There are MPLS and there are Sonic versions that do support MPLS, but that hasn't been contributed. And for example, we know that uh, Microsoft, you know, they, they, by purchase of Metaswitch, they do have MPLS stacks that they can run on top of their Sonic. Um, I believe Juniper also had announced, and this is a, this is a public announcement, that they, they, they did announce that they are running MPLS on, on Sonic. Um, or segment segment routing, formally to have segment routing in Sonic. So all of these, they have to actually come in, uh, but then again at the same time, for the telcos, they also look at, well, I need one, one a neck to choke. You know, so you can't, you know, the, the bits and pieces, hey, I'm gonna pick, pick, pick a piece here, pick a piece here, we really have to look at, look at the, the one neck to choke. Um, okay, the big shiny object, AI. Uh, AI is in, in its infancies. I think Cameron talked about the Tomahawk 5, what's coming out of Ultra, Ultra, um, Ultra Ethernet Consortium. Uh, you have the back end networks, you have the front end. Um, you know, uh, really AI gets into the monitoring aspect. How much is Sonic going to to enable um, orchestrators and and you know uh, to to actually monitor um, the inband uh, capabilities that exist with the embedded ARM platform on on Broadcom is is ap absolutely absolutely phenomenal. I know that because in my past life we worked with it. Um, but if we look at AI, AI is not just about large language models. You have AI also coming towards the edge and so forth, and you can't always afford to put Tomahawk 5s there. I mean, that's big. So now, if we kind of bring it down a little bit to a maybe a less expensive device, can an orchestrator look and assist with congestion and actually minimizing the impact of the large, um, the, the elephant flows or whatnot that is going through, can we actually look at it and, uh, and, and remedy the situation? That's something that we're looking at. And, and obviously, you know, when you look at what's gonna be coming out from a standards bodies, as soon as those are released, there's going to be um, all the orchestrators, you know, and I, I know Beyond Edge is, is already made the announcement. We're about to make the announcement. We all will be doing the exact same thing from a uh, looking at uh, those platforms and making sure that we can actually um, 
we can orchestrate those, those, uh, those, those flows. But anyhow, when we look at AI fabrics, it's great from a uh, ultimately uh, adoption of Sonic. I think it will be a boost because it's a, it's an easy fit. It's not that difficult. It's an easy fit. Uh, but again, uh, it's it's in its infancy. And one additional item on the on Sonic. Ultimately, I believe Sonic needs to be pared down so it can actually run on the GPU. So keep that in mind. I, I think that that needs to be it needs to be in place. Um, ultimately, this is my last slide, is uh, from a call to action. Um, we need to have more support, and not just segmented support for the entire stack. This is including from, from orchestration platform to the operating system, to the hardware that needs to be in place if we wanted to really give the same experience to a uh, operator who actually is used to a vertically integrated solution. And we have to kind of target that. So it has to be kind of, kind of vertically integrated rather than piecemeal solutions. So piecemeal solutions do, do not work. Um, there needs to be more from, from, from my perspective. I, I, I um, mentioned again what Matt was mentioning. There needs to be again more, more innovation outside of the data center on, on Sonic. And I think there will be, or there needs to be a, a better solution that would enable the commoditization of the hardware, not just vertically integrated. So I'll leave you, you know, so if you look at the community, which is, which is, which runs on different platforms, then you look at, uh, on the other side of it, you have enterprise, which runs on different platforms. There's got to be something there, probably in the middle, that could run on different platforms and enable uh, choice for our, for our customers. So that's, to me, I think that that's, that needs to take place. All right. Well, thank you so much. Questions? Any questions? Quick question. I, um, it's related to the gentleman who presented as well. Uh, I see a lot of talk about edge. Um, uh, an interesting observation on my end, I believe there is a lot of consolidation that happens on the edge, and I'm seeing a lot of push, meaning a lot of the services, because customers want to uh, consolidate based on the things that happen geographically, power consumption, all that kind of stuff. So you see firewalling running virtually on x86 platforms. So I, I'm, de I'm debating really the use of Sonic at that edge, given that you can have one device or two devices maybe running Sonic, unless if you have multiple. So just, just to understand the view of yeah. having these devices run the edge, if you can eventually run um, anything on x86, unless if you're actually going to virtualize Sonic to run on x86 to provide that connectivity. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Rami, you put your hand, your finger on a, absolutely a, an, an item that um, uh, I was actually going to, to mention, and I did not mention in my, in my, in my talk, is that Sonic should be virtualized. It's, it's already set up to be virtualized. I know Mavenir did it uh, in a sense of creating the, uh, the uh, virtualized cell site router. And I do see it that it really needs to become virtualized and even at some point become cloud native. I think there must be, uh, I think there's some, some, some work towards that. So absolutely, it lends itself to it and we can do it. There's not, nothing prevents it. I mean, essentially you take Psy and, and you can virtualize the rest of it and then basically get there. So I'm, uh, you know, now, will it happen to your point? I don't know, but, but it can. It absolutely can. I appreciate the question. <laughs>